Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm getting started on pizza sauce, so I'm going to start that with setting up my food mill. I have a grinder attachment, um, tomato strainer for my Cabela's heavy duty meat grinder. Um, this was quite an investment, but one that I'm really happy we made. Um, now I can do more tomato products more quickly. Um, there's other ways to de-seed and skin your tomatoes. Uh, I find them quite labor intensive, but the ball books um, give some suggestions about coring, removing the seeds and peels, and then roasting in the oven. Um, that's not how I'm going to do it today. I'm going to do it the easy way and get the appliances to help me. So it's been a while. There's lots of pieces to this. I'm probably going to check my manual to put this together correctly. I have put a meat grinder together incorrectly before and broken it. It was the one for the KitchenAid. Um, so maybe it makes me a little paranoid. All right, this guy goes in here, easy enough. And then the mesh part goes on over top. And I'm supposed to push and turn this. Okay. And then we put on our thing. Place the large sauce funnel hanger ring behind the locking nut. Now, the first time I did this, I didn't place it behind the nut. I put it in front of the nut. Um, that's not how you're supposed to do it. It leaked all over the place. So, behind the nut, and this one clips on the other end. We've got our little plastic shieldy bit um, that clips on. I find this easy to do once it's mounted. So I'm gonna mount this to the grinder. get my plastic bit on. Yes. The rubber piece goes on the end, the skinny end. Okay, do this correctly and you won't have tomatoes go everywhere. Do it incorrectly and man, will you ever make a mess. This one just sets at the top and your handy smooshy tool. So that wasn't so bad. It only takes a few seconds. <sighs> it has been a while since I've done this, but I successfully made almost a year's worth of homemade pizza sauce last year. So I really want to be able to do that again this year. I have so many tomatoes. Um, so that is my goal to start with for today. Um, we're going to get another year's worth of pizza sauce ready. Maybe not all today. I think we're going to do two batches of pizza sauce. And that should last Chris and I for the year, hopefully. This year we made it until July. It's now September, so we've gone two months without uh, homemade pizza sauce. But I think we've only bought one jar from the grocery store, so that's not so bad. All right, I'm gonna get started on quartering some tomatoes and then we can get started on putting them through. All right, on this side of the kitchen, we're gonna do the dicing. So I'm gonna get my cutting board, my sharp knife, and I have my tomatoes in a colander. So I'm gonna rinse all my tomatoes under cool running water for food safety first. And then I'm just going to quarter them and take out the core. All right, I could be more exact and weigh these, um, and maybe I should be, but I think I'm gonna weigh them as I quarter them. I think that's gonna be the most efficient method today. So, kitchen scale. My kitchen is not clean. I don't know where half of my stuff is. Um, yeah, it's been a week, so. Not my favorite bowl to use for this, but I'll use my bread bowl. Um, so I'm just putting that on my kitchen scale and zeroing that out. 
Um, I have the pizza sauce recipe from the complete book of home preserving. And it says that to make the 13 cups of tomato puree um, that we're gonna do with the food mill, I need about nine pounds of plum tomatoes. Obviously, I don't have all plum tomatoes. I surprisingly have a few because I got these from my CSA, but I have a lot more beefsteak style tomatoes. They're really meaty, um, so I'm gonna go about the same weight and hopefully we'll be close. Just to show you the inside of that. So, quartered tomatoes. There are a couple of soft spots on some of these tomatoes that aren't looking great because they've been um, here on my counter for longer than they should have been. So I'm just taking those off as long as they're not moldy or really, really soft. I'm going to go ahead and use them today. A little tool to destem. So that's a way to core a tomato too. Just this little coring tool. This is a firework one. It's really stripey. But it's also a nice meaty tomato. It's mostly what I grow. It's definitely something I look for because that's what we prefer to have on our sandwiches. Um, but I love a versatile tomato that I can just bring in out of the garden and either eat fresh or do canning with. This is one of those fundy tomatoes. They've got um, a lot of yellow on the top. I'm really surprised they didn't uh, fully ripen down, but we'll go ahead. All right, we're at 3.8 pounds. We're gonna keep going. Got another whole basket of tomatoes and there's another one behind you. There's more on the counter. The garden is ready. I was not. All right, this one's not as ripe as I would want, um, but it's having some soft stuff. I don't know if it's gonna make it, but we're not using that today. Another firework. Oof. All right, we got some soft spots. I'm just gonna cut those off. sure oh this is a fur wick also but there's a few more seeds in this one stripy tomatoes make me happy they were my first variety to come ripe, so I'm not surprised to see so many of them in the basket today. All right, so we just hit five pounds. I think I have enough room in this bowl to keep going to nine. I think this is a cosmonaut. Um, they are a lot larger this year than what I've ever had from them. They're huge, but we'll take it. They usually have a really nice flavor. They're not as acidic as some tomatoes, so I really like them for fresh eating, but they're really meaty and great for canning too.
So this is a tomato from an effaciated blossom. So it was actually two flowers that formed one tomato. You can see it's kind of ugly in there. We're just gonna cut that out. So we're gonna cut that. You can see there's still a bit of a stem here. I'm gonna use my coring tool. Let's clean that up a bit. Maybe I need to not baby my strainer so much. I don't know. But still lots of usable tomato. Some people don't like the heirloom varieties for this reason, but I don't know. I think the flavor makes up for having to, you know, spend some extra time slicing. There's never much. That stem was ginormous. Paul Robson. I love these. They have such a nice deep flavor. Oop. But we did have some cracking on the bottom and that won't come through the strainer. So that's just fine. Great. We're at almost eight pounds, so a few more. seven ounces. And nine pounds. So just for funsies, I'm going to put in an extra one. Rather have extra, not less. Okay, so I have a beautiful bowl here of heirloom tomatoes. We're gonna get these through the food strainer and working on our pizza sauce. For ease of use, I'm gonna use my stock pot um, to fit below the strainer. Get you guys a slightly lower angle so you can see there. Okay, hopefully that's a bit better. Um, this is the joys. I need to be able to put the tomatoes in and reach things. I don't have a plug on my island, so this is what we're going to work with. Alrighty, let's get smooshing. battery died while I was finishing that but I did finish. I did reprocess the skins and uh, seeds again um, just to get out all of that extra pulp and things that I would like for my sauce. Um, they're much more dry now than they were the first run and I got a lot more pulp out. I've got a very full stock pot. This is not what I'm going to be processing in today. I'm going to use one of my larger stock pots 
and I still have a lot of tomatoes left and I know I have more in the garden so I think I'm gonna use those to do a double batch of pizza sauce to save myself some time do it all together um, I know it'll take a little longer to cook down but I'm okay with that so I'm gonna try to not make a ginormous mess which is very very difficult with this stuff um, hmm. All right, I've got a flat pan. I'm just gonna switch these out. Cause it's not very tall. Um, yeah, maybe I should put this on a box or something. I don't know. Find my larger stock pot. All right, I got my larger stock pot. Um, this is my nicer one. It's a Paderno pot. It's got a really nice thick bottom. So I like to use this for things that need to cook down. Um, put all of our tomato puree in there. Ooh. And I'm not measuring, and I'm okay with that, I think. Because I know I have more than what I need. Let's measure out another nine pounds of tomatoes and do this all over again. All right, so we're on to round two. This is my second um, round of nine pounds of tomatoes. I've cut these ones a bit smaller um, and a bit thinner so that they can fit through the chute better. Um, and hopefully I'll coat my cabinets in less tomato sauce this time. So we're all ready. We're gonna get this done and then we'll get started on our double batch of pizza sauce. I'm so excited because this should really truly be a year's worth of pizza sauce. our tomato puree. A lot less time consuming than um, trying to scoop the tomato seeds out individually. So um, thankful for that. It's a good investment. These things, um, the grinder motor and the tomato strainer were quite expensive. Um, but I like it. We've used the meat grinder to make sausages in the past. Um, I wouldn't say it's paid for itself yet, but it certainly made it easier. Alright. So this nice little 9x9 nine nine flat pan was good for catching the rest. So this is my very full stock pot of a tomato puree. Very, very excited. We still have seasonings and acid to add to this. Um, so we've got our tomato puree. We're gonna add half a cup of bottled lemon juice per recipe. So that for us means one full cup, which means I'm going to the basement to get more. So it is in fact really important that you do use a bottled lemon juice, not fresh lemon juice, because this has been tested for the acidity, um, which will make your pizza sauce safe to pan. Oops, that's not right. See, I have half a cup, I need a full cup. 
all the brain today. All right, one full cup of lemon juice. So te two teaspoons of dried oregano per recipe. So for that, we're doing four total. One, two, three, four. Now I did do heaping teaspoons. The amount of dried seasonings that go into your sauce does not affect the safety of it. Um, Last time I did find this to be kind of boring, um, so I did add some more oregano this time. Um, I'm gonna stick with the recommended one teaspoon of garlic powder per recipe. Let me just okay, we got one. Salt, we want to make sure the salt we're using is safe for canning. Don't need to end up with any weird discoloration or funky stuff going on with our pizza sauce. So, one teaspoon per recipe. And we do need some freshly ground black pepper. So I'm just gonna estimate um, while I crack this in here. I think that's good enough. All right, so that is all of our ingredients. Now we're gonna bring this up to a boil over high heat. Um, I'm gonna try more medium so I don't have any scalding to the bottom. And it says that you could start with half of the tomato puree. Obviously I didn't do that. I'm sure it would just make it easier. But we're gonna boil all of this. And we're gonna continue a hard boil stirring frequently until that it is the thickness of a commercial pizza sauce. Um, you know, really dedicate some time to this step and make sure it's as thick as you want. Mine was really thin last year, and while it still tasted good, um, it made my pizza kind of mushy. Um, I really make that sound very appetizing. It says about 15 minutes. I know there's no way I'm going to get this to be as thick as I want in 15 minutes. I expect this to take more of an hour. Um, but in that time, I am going to get together my jars. So this says that we can can it in four pint, 500 milliliter jars. I'm going to do the half pint jars because when we have pizza, it's usually just Chris and I, and we have one garlic finger and one pizza. So I want to make sure that what I'm keeping in the fridge, um, is as fresh as possible. So I'm going to do those smaller jars rather than the big ones. If you have a large family, maybe the 500 milliliter jars would work for you. But I'm also thinking of what is my fridge going to look like in January? I usually have so many jars in there. Um, I would like to have space to put other things. So, yeah. Um, this is going to come up to a boil and we're going to let it thicken and we'll go from there.
my biggest problem with being disabled in canning is the fact that I cannot physically lift this pot when it's full. Um, so I do all kinds of creative things to fill it. Today, I'm using my smaller canning pot and I'm just gonna fill this like a quarter to a half um, before adding the water to the larger pot. Probably more than enough water now. Um, we just wanna make sure that when we add our jars, there's more than one inch of water over the top. Um, and because we're using the half pint jars, they're a bit shorter, so I shall go find some of those. I'm also gonna add some vinegar because we have lots of minerals in our water. So I'm estimating that I'm going to need about 16 half pint jars. I think this canner should hold that many. Perfect. We got 16 in there. And a little bit of room. So we're going to put the lid on this, just turn it on low and let this come up to heat while our tomato sauce thickens. Uh, it's really cold water from the well, so it'll probably take a while. So many hours later, and I'm finally happy with the thickness of my sauce. I'm just turning the heat off here now, and we're going to get the rest of the things ready for this canning process. We're going to get some um, fresh lids washed in hot soapy water and um, find some rings. Uh, and get our tools out and we'll start canning this up. All right, on to canning. So we're doing a half inch headspace. That's definitely overfilled, but that's fine. So this one is overfilled. I'm just gonna adjust my headspace um, and add it to one of my less filled jars. And much better. That one could still use a bit more. I mean like just a little bit. All right, we're gonna wipe our rims. Burn our fingers a bit. Tight these to fingertip tight. 
And we're going to try to boil less aggressively than I did the other day with the tomatillo salsa um, and hope that we don't have any more issues with lids coming off while we're canning. We got the jars out, just making room in the canner. All right, I'm gonna stir this quite a bit because when I'm reaching to the bottom, I'm getting a lot more tomato pulp. It's like it's separated some, um, which is very frustrating. But. Not entirely unexpected, I guess. If you have any tips to get a more consistent thickness, let me know. Maybe it's just because I'm using the tomato strainer. I don't know. This one's not going on easily, so I think there's a bend in this ring. I can kind of see it now. Um, this is going to go in recycling, so I don't try to use it. All right, so I still have a whole lot of sauce left. Um, once I'm done processing these ones, I'm just going to keep this warm, um, bring it back up to a boil, and then finish out the remainder of the jars. We got a bit more than we expect it. That's fine. All right, that's what the canner looks like very full. We'll let that process and we'll get our other bit done too. Couldn't be happier with the time that I took to get the pizza sauce to thicken. It's actually a good consistency similar to a commercial pizza sauce. Successfully canned 21 half pints of pizza sauce and I feel that I now have a year's worth of pizza sauce. So we've got some there, some over here, and yes, I've ran the dishwasher twice, but my kitchen still looks like this. But I wanted to show you a year's worth of pizza sauce. Catch you guys in the next one.